It's been called the second gold rush out here in Colorado. <laughs> but do you agree with that? I mean, really, can anyone just sort of jump on the bandwagon? Well, uh, the regulatory framework is becoming more open uh, to outsiders, if you will, but the key is being a resident for uh, at least two years here in the state of Colorado. Uh, but again, it's an honor to be described as a marijuana millionaire, but at the end of the day, it's been an incredibly challenging business. On one side of the issue, it's great and a constant punchline. Those states seeking to legalize marijuana might need to first ensure they have enough late night drive through cheeseburger joints and plenty of ding dongs and ring dings to care for the munchies overflow. But maybe we need to back off the humor, focus on some of the realities here. Because what's happening in Colorado is not entirely a laughing matter to some. Welcome to Midpoint Around the Dial from K House, 630 in Denver, Colorado, where she holds down morning drive from 5 to 10 a.m. every morning. She's mile high on a daily basis. Mandy Connell joins us now on Ed, Midpoint. You weren't, supposed, you weren't supposed to tell people that I was mile high on a daily basis. I maybe know. on a weekend. They're, yeah, not, they're, they're, they're not supposed to know. I get it. Okay. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Okay. It's the old Monty Python bit. Hey, on a serious note, first of all, let's just get this out of the way right away. There's a story coming out, and this was in the, De the Denver Globe, or the Denver Post, rather, where it said legal pot blamed for some if influx of homeless in Denver this summer. Now, I'm going to show everybody a graphic here that talks about the Salvation Army single men's shelter in Denver. Shows that last summer they were averaging about 225 men each night, now about 300 each night. It's an increase in the number of 18 to 25 year olds. It's about a quarter of the increase, they say, is marijuana related. So is, is it because, as some people said, that it's young people traveling to Denver trying to find work in the pot industry and they just have no place else to stay, or is it something more serious? Well, there's a couple things in that story, and, and I want to say this about the news media coverage of how pot has become legal and the legalization process and the regulations that have occurred up to this point. There has been very little in the way of negatives to report. Yeah, there have been some issues, and, and this story is one of those examples, but there's been a concerted effort in the news media to find the places where things are having a negative impact. You know as well as I do, Ed, if it bleeds, it leads. So they're looking for the downside, and I think they really kind of dug deep on this one. Uh, on the one hand, especially because we have an influx of younger people, and there are younger people who want to come and sit on the creek side in Boulder and get high in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, of course, that, that is going to be uh, a percentage of, of people, but it's a very small percentage. and. Uh, something that kind of got left out of that story is that Denver has seen tremendous growth over the last few years, especially in the category of millennials. And these are not homeless millennials. These are millennials coming to Denver for opportunity because our economy has recovered very, very well from the recession. It's not perfect. It's not where it was before. But there's a lot of young people out here seeking non-pot-related jobs. So I would think statistically at least a small portion of that population would be seeking jobs in the pot industry. And, uh, you know, we talked about it this morning on my show because I knew I was coming on and I didn't, you know, I wanted to kind of get a feel for the community. And I think a lot of people feel like there is some young people who simply have um, kind of attached a sort of glamorous ideal to living uh, and not having any responsibilities and just sitting around in a park all day and smoking and, and drinking. Uh, but I don't think it's an excessive number. I don't think we're looking at throngs of homeless people coming here because of pot. I really think that the Denver Post had to dig deep and exclude the sort of growth that we've had in that age group anyway in order to make it seem like we're having homeless people every day on the streets because we have legal pot. Then why are we getting these stories in? Is it simply just a certain faction that is looking to make sure that this fails eventually, looking to look at every single negative? You would expect, I guess, sooner or later that somebody's going to have to be even-handed in their coverage. Uh, you know, a lot of the news media outlets, though they covered all of the sort of dire predictions that happened before the legalization went through, dire predictions that have continued as Colorado and Denver and other municipalities struggle to come up with a regulatory system and a regulatory framework that works for both the community and for people in the industry. I mean, we're, we're still in the very early stages of this entire process. And whether they have a vested interest in trying to uh, ensure that the industry fails. You know, I don't think it's that nefarious. I just think they're looking for something that's going to feed the crowd that didn't want pot in the first place. And and they're having to reach deep to do it. There, there hasn't been a tremendous problem. It's, it's gone as smoothly as I think it possibly could have, to be perfectly honest. We haven't had an uptick in crime. We haven't had an uptick in 
in, in bad things. As a matter of fact, our violent crime rate dropped over the first uh, six months of this year. I want to stop you right there because I want to put some numbers to that right now. Six okay. months since marijuana has been legal, the Denver PD, significant reduction in crime, 38% drop in homicides, 19% drop in sexual assaults. Additionally, the data show an 11% decline in property crimes during the same time. There are those who would say, that's wonderful, but it's mostly because these people can't walk once they've had a couple of quick shots. <laughs> well, we do have good pot out here, I've heard, Ed, for people. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've heard. I've just heard. Uh, you have no, no yeah, personal experience whatsoever. I understand no, completely. No, no. But you know what, Ed, when you take something that has been part of the black market, where the only opportunity for people to get hot up until this point has been with criminals, and you take that part out of it and you allow people to have a legal transaction with a pot industry that is doing everything in its power to follow the law. They have a vested interest in making sure that the laws are followed to the letter of the law. And, you know, when you take the criminal element out of it, I think that you are going to see a drop in crime because you're dealing with a different caliber of people. And, you know, whether we like it in this country or not, there's a certain percentage of the population that wants to just check out when they get off work. They want to sit down, they want to have a cocktail, or they want to have a bong hit. And to act as if somehow making that illegal is going to change that, I think is unrealistic. But because the industry has, has been so tightly regulated, I, I don't think it's attractive necessarily for a criminal element that may have been a part of our city before. 30 seconds, they, are they still doing a good enough job though keeping it out of the hands of kids under the age? I think that's gonna be an issue going forward. I think that we're gonna have to worry about that. I don't think they've done enough to eliminate the black market overall. They, they, they really have to attack the black market in order to sort of streamline the process further. And I think we'll see that happen in the next year or so. Do they get it and the voters get it and the lawmakers get it, even the people who are smoking get it, that this still has to be kept out of the hands of young kids? Oh, absolutely. There's no, no discussion to the contrary on that. We all are in lockstep agreement that this is not a child's activity and it is it is necessary and pertinent to try and keep it out of the hands of kids as much as we possibly can. I've always said that if there was ever going to be a news network where it would be a little more than a mile high, we'll probably start in Denver, Colorado, and I think I'm probably still short of this day as well. Mandy, well, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. We're all out of time, but listen, let's do it again real soon. We'll talk about more what's going on in the West and more about what you're hearing on the morning shows on KHA 630. Thanks, Ed. All right, thanks a lot, Mandy. Next hour, lawmakers who want to make it mandatory for a controversial new movie to be seen by every student, and it has more than a few people concerned. Next up, please, people, enough already with the Mitt Romney 2016 idea. It's my commentary in telling it like it is.